one final question, then we're going to have to bring this to a close. It, uh, it's, it's a good question. It seems one of the best ways to learn is from past mistakes. Uh, um, uh, in your experience, what are some of the mistakes you have observed on cross-border deals, and, and what can you learn from them? <laughs> any mistakes? Have you seen any mistakes? Uh, never. <laughs> not, not a single one. Uh, not from your clients? Uh, no. Yeah, not from my personal clients, yeah. uh, perhaps others. Uh, I think the biggest risk that we have watched is this integration risk we mentioned earlier, uh, which is people aren't prepared for actually what happens the day after you close. And they make the acquisition. They haven't defined how they're going to create value. They haven't defined how they're going to run it. They haven't defined how they're going to integrate it. And, you know, 12 months later, what they're telling you is this was a horrible thing. In fact, the strategic rationale didn't change. They just executed poorly. And I think that's the biggest observation, I would say, about deals that went wrong. Chris? Oh, I, I, I mean, I, I, we, could, we could stay here for the next uh, few weeks talking about this topic. But I would say one, one of the common mistakes is really just assuming that everything um, outside the United States there is, is, operates in exactly the same way as it does in the United States. Um, doing deals in different geographies, you know, if you're doing a deal in China or India or Brazil or, or the UK for that matter, um, you know, the, the regulatory environment is different, the business environment's different, there are cultural differences, and if you don't understand that and you're not working with people on your team with, um, you know, who really understand the local environment, you're at a, an extreme disadvantage. I, I, a couple of things occur to me. I, th I think one is um, some of the best deals I've ever worked on um, from the client's point of view were those that didn't get done. Um, so it, one, of the, one of the mistakes is ignoring all of the parameters you've set at the inception of a transaction because mm -hmm. the momentum is there to, to do it. And um, all of this due diligence that comes back and feeds into analytical processes um, is there for a reason. So uh, it's a very hard thing to do. Um, I think the other, on the other side of the coin is doing a deal where you know there are problems, um, but you know it, the business makes sense. Uh, but the, the person you're dealing with is is something else, and you know so you you got it coming or going. But there are a lot of good deals that get done, and they're done beautifully, and everything works out. Um, fortunately, otherwise we wouldn't be in this <laughs> business. <Yeah. you> know? <laughs> all right, we're we're going to wrap it up now. Uh, Dan, Chris, uh, Alan, I want to thank you for your participation. I want to thank all of our viewers uh, for joining us. Um, this um, um, website will be available on, I'm sorry, this, this webcast will be available on our website um, for a number of months or as long as it has relevance. And I welcome you to um, um, keep your eye out for future webcasts we do. All right, thank you all very much. <laughs>